Five years ago I bought this massive piece of quite expensive O1 tool steel to make a massive chopping knife from. After weeks of grinding and filing I got the knife looking pretty good and I went for the heat treat. I was using my homemade electric foundry which isn't ideal for heating up a blade this long and I didn't heat the blade evenly and it ended up cracking all the way down the spine. This was pretty devastating after all the hard work I put in, so I built a proper heat treatment oven so that I could heat up bits of metal more evenly and hopefully avoid having this issue ever again. I also was able to salvage enough usable material to make this quite unique looking weird blade. That knife came out looking pretty unique and there's a full YouTube video on my channel if you want to check it out. But I still had this pretty weird looking piece of material from the front of the blade that I'd already spent many hours grinding into a taper. There's absolutely nothing that I hate more than waste, and after a few months of this just sitting on my desk, I couldn't resist the opportunity of turning it into a small whittling knife. So that's what this video is about. Once I had a design I liked, I went to anneal the blade, since the failed heat treat definitely put a bunch of weird stresses into this bit that was left at the front. I set the heat treatment oven to 800 degrees Celsius, which it heated up to quite quickly, and then I just let it soak there for a few hours, and then let it cool down really slowly overnight. This relieves all of the internal stress within the metal. Here's what it looks like after that, and the metal's nice and soft, so it's time to start shaping it. The majority of stock removal can just be done with an angle grinder. This is really cheap and it takes away material very quickly. The angle grinder is quite aggressive and removes a lot of material, so a lot of the final shaping was done with metal files. Since the steel is pretty soft after annealing, a sharp metal file can actually remove a surprising amount of material. With the blade clamped down and the metal file attached to a piece of wood, you can actually use it as a guide to rough in all of the bevels. Since this fixes the file at an angle, it guarantees you perfectly straight bevels. This process is obviously a lot slower than just using a good belt grinder, but I don't have a very good one. It's on my to-do list to make one. So this is what the blade looks like after the basic shaping and after I've roughed in the bevels. I quite like this weird shape of the handle and it's actually surprisingly ergonomic. Some of the cracks from that first heat treat that ruined the big knife have been transferred into the handle, but fortunately the blade is still looking all good so far. After a little bit more fine shaping using files, I then moved on to using the belt sander to smooth everything out and remove all of the deep scratches left by the files. It was then time for the hand sanding to give a really nice finish before the heat treat. Using silicon carbide wet and dry paper, I went from 240 grit all the way up to about 600 grit. And this is what the blade looks like after that hand sanding, and I'm very pleased with the way that it's looking. I really like how the whole thing is sort of one organic shape, one seamless piece of metal that then tapers down to a very small thin blade. And I've also still got about 0.2mm left of the edge on the front, which is perfect for the heat treat. So now the blade is looking really nice, it's time for the heat treat again, and it's made so easy with this homemade heat treatment oven. I let the blade soak for a while at 800 degrees Celsius and then quench it into some cold motor oil. The rapid cooling of the O1 tool steel changes the grain structure within the metal and causes it to become really, really hard. During that process, the metal becomes so hard that it's actually quite brittle and fragile, a bit like glass. So it's standard practice to then temper the metal down to make it slightly softer and more durable, and I did this for two hours in a toaster oven at about 250 degrees Celsius. This is the new hardened blade after the heat treatment, and I'm very pleased with how clean it's looking. There's very minimal oxide scaling, and that's all down to my new heat treatment oven performing really well. After a bit more cleanup, everything's looking quite nice. 
Some of the cracks in the handle did get slightly larger, but I've examined the blade very thoroughly and there's nothing in the blade and there's still enough solid material in the handle that this shouldn't be a problem. I sanded the blade to 600 grit before applying a protective cold blue finish. Cold blue or gun blue is a chemical that you can apply onto the surface of steel and it will oxidise the steel and cause it to rust very slightly and this layer then helps protect against further oxidisation. Since this steel is a carbon steel it will rust quite easily without this, especially in the handle section. After applying an initial base coat I then apply more layers of gun blue with some 5000 grit sandpaper. This helps to polish all of the edges and leads to this really nice polished worn effect. I then hit the whole thing with a buffing wheel to make it really shiny. This is how it looks after that and I'm really pleased with how shiny it is. I potentially might have buffed off a little bit too much of the cold blue so I might have to reapply some more but we'll see how it goes. So the final step in the knife making process is to put an edge on the blade. Initially I have to do a lot of roughing with a 240 grit whetstone. This puts the first edge on the blade and sets the angle of the edge. I then successively move up the grits to 5000 grit and then do a little bit of stropping and the knife is razor sharp. I've thoroughly enjoyed making this knife, it's been a really nice break from some of the computer work that I've been doing more recently on some of the CNC projects, really nice to get back to some hands on manual work, it's a lot more creative and free. In the end, maybe it wasn't such a bad thing that this big knife cracked, because a knife that large I probably never would have used, but two of these smaller knives are actually quite useful and I think they're really unique looking little blades. I really hope that you've also enjoyed this project and I will see you in the next one.